So we're going to move right into section two, which is going to be what affects fire behavior. And as you can see from our fire triangle here, we got weather, such as wind, temperature, humidity, precipitation, uh, topography, such as slope or aspect, you know, aspect being north, south, east and west, and, um, and that does affect the fire based on the amount of sunlight and drying time that each of those aspects have. And then slope, depending on how steep it is, um, the fire really heads as it's going uphill, and the steeper that is, uh, the more dangerous it could be. And then last, well, fuel, and that's the amount of fuel, the arrangement, the fuel moisture, and, um, and where it sits in the mid-story ground or canopy. All right, so now we're going to move into fuels, the vertical arrangement of fuels. You know, at the lowest level, we have ground fuels, which would be organic matter, such as peat or something like that, right above the mineral soil. And then actually on the surface itself, laying above the ground, is going to be surface fuels like pine straw or leaves, other matter. Um, you have ladder fuels, and those could be staggered throughout the mid-story and understory, depending on you know, how high that vegetation is growing. And then aerial fuels, which is really what you want to avoid in most cases. Uh, you do not want a canopy fire, which would be an aerial fuel. So with our fuels, we have fuel moisture, which is actually very important to whether or not the fuel is actually going to burn or what amount of time it will burn. And uh, now we're going to move into fuel size and shape. And this is that time lag that we talked about in dead fuels. You know, we got one hour, 10 hour, 100 hour. So in our one hour fuel, zero to a quarter of an inch, you're looking at stuff like pine straw and grasses and stuff that is, you know, very small and easily combustible. And small twigs, you know, like this kind of stuff right here. Um, this is all one hour fuels. And if it's, if it's arranged in a, in a mat on the ground, like these pine straw and sticks were on the ground, it's going to act more along the lines of a 10 hour fuel because it doesn't have enough air circulation to dry it out in that one hour time lag that you would normally classify it in. So if it were staggered and hanging in the uh, mid-story or understory, it's going to dry faster than it is if it's flat on the ground. Your 10 hour stuff, you know, is a quarter inch to one inch. So you're looking at just small sticks like this, and that's 10 hours that this stuff needs to dry down enough to burn which these are not very big, so that 10 hours is a long time. And once again, it, it makes a difference in if it's flat on the ground or somehow standing up enough to get uh, airflow. And as we move into the one to three inch diameter is a hundred hour fuel, and that's just something just like this, which is once again, not very big for a hundred hours. And then as you move on up to three to eight inches, a thousand hours, and then uh, when you get above eight inches, you're getting into the 10,000 hour fuels. And that's stuff like actual trees and larger debris on the forest floor. And now we're going to move, and this is more weather related. This is your atmospheric stability. Once again, this is where your kestrel can play in um, to helping you uh, assess on ground conditions. I mean, there's a happy medium between stability and instability. Temperature and relative humidity have an inverse relationship in that temperature increases, the relative humidity decreases. And so, you know, there's, once again, there's a happy medium between too dry and not dry enough. And a good rule of thumb is around that 30% relative humidity. Temperature, relative humidity, and wind speed or direction, indirection are just your, your main factors in burning. I mean, that relative humidity, if it's not high enough, you're not going to be able to burn anyway. And if it's too low, you're, you could wind up burning something you really don't want to.